Hello and welcome to another tutorial. We're going to continue our discussion of why use uh, nested classes. So com uh, compelling reasons for using nested classes include the following. It is a way of logically grouping classes that are only used in one place. If a class is useful to only one other class, then it is logical to embed it in that class and keep the two together. Nesting such helper classes make uh, makes their package uh, more uh, streamlined, which means let's say you have this uh, this class we call it nested class. This is supposed to represent our car, and we said that there are two ways that a car can have a battery, for example, right? Uh, obviously, battery we want to represent it as an option uh, as an object. So there are two options here. One, um, somebody uh, basically provides creates the battery outside the class and then uh, passes it passes a reference or a pointer to that battery object which has already been created and initialized and then this nested class just grabs the pointer or the reference and keeps that so that it can always reach out to that battery that's one thing the problem is that in this way somebody is actually uh, injecting the dependency this is called dependency injection but in this case for our case it actually makes more sense because the uh, it makes more sense that the car class or this nested class itself manage it's the bad manage its own battery object what this means is that the user the end user creates a car for example and then uh, the car internally based on the model that the user chooses internally selects the right battery and obviously we want the battery to be an object so we define it as a non-static nested inner class right so this is one way. This way, the end user is not uh, worried about creating a battery and then passes pass it to this uh, car so that the car can function properly. Uh, this uh, in this case, we said that the class itself manages its own resources. So the class uh, manages its uh, own resources. Now we said that usually memory is regarded as the resource, but even other dependencies. So instead of resource, maybe we should, we should say dependency because a car class depends on a dependency, which is a battery, right? But then we said that the end user doesn't worry about the, uh, doesn't worry about it because it just selects the model and the car creates its own dependency and manages it. So creates and manages. So the class itself creates and manages uh, its own uh, dependency, right? So, uh, but the other concept is dependency injection, dependency injection. And this is when somebody else, somebody else outside the class uh, creates the battery, for example, creates the battery. Note that the battery class in this case, this battery is a dependency. The car cannot function without having a battery object, right? Uh, creates the battery and just uh, passes uh, a pointer or a reference uh, to the class constructor. And this was the um, one thing. So we can have the battery as a standalone class and it doesn't even hold a reference to a car object or anything. Somebody creates this and then passes, passes it to the constructor, right? So the constructor looks something like this battery battery now this in in this case this is not recommended for our use case here for example a car because the battery has a tight dependency on the model right we know that based on the model the battery is going to change so if the end user is supposed to provide both the model and the battery there might be a chance that the end user makes a mistake and passes the wrong battery and we want to definitely avoid that right because uh, we said that different cars might not accept a generic battery object so in this case, it's better to let the class itself manage its own dependency, which is the battery. So the end user just selects the model and different models can select the, 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 the battery correctly. So this is one use case of uh, having uh, using nested classes. The other one was that obviously nesting classes creates a another level of hierarchy because you cannot access, for example, this uh, battery type directly. You have to say the outer class or the outer type dot inner type. And we saw that in the bytecode, this dot becomes dollar sign. This is very important to remember. It increases encapsulation. Consider two top level classes, A and B, where B needs access to members of A, right? And we said that in, in our case, the battery needs to access the model. So, uh, and once we declared as a nested inner class, 
and we make sure that the model is initialized the state of the outer class is initialized and then the battery we can just directly use this model note that we cannot say this dot model so this is something we have to be careful about now this dot model doesn't work so uh, maybe i should actually write it here this dot model uh, doesn't work here because now the question is what is this referring to and this always refers to the scope of the object you're using this in the scope of the battery class which means that this pointer right this is a reference or pointer is pointing to the battery not the outer class right so we should just directly use model so you cannot say this dot model inside the scope of the inner class because this uh, refers to the inner class you can say for example this dot voltage this works fine because this means this current battery object not the outer class right so this is very important so encapsulation and then grouping different classes uh, by hiding class B within class A A's members can be declared private because because uh, as as long as B is a nested class, it can access any member of A, even private. And uh, um, right now uh, we declared uh, um, in the nested class model and battery. These are all private. This model is private, but the nested class has no problem accessing them. So let's add a uh, private uh, uh, static. So let's say a static or private. Let's start with private. Private a static int uh, price let's say uh, um, let's initialize it to something usually obviously different cars have different prices so it shouldn't be a static but for the sake of example i'm going to say it's 100 and it's a static field right now i'm getting a warning that this is a private field and you've never used it anywhere else so maybe you don't need it but we're going to use it shortly now battery was a nested class right so um the question is can we access the a static state of the outer class and the answer is yes um, so uh, let's say return voltage if I comment this out and say return voltage plus for example uh, price as you can see is a static field I, uh, from the outer class and I can access it inside the inner class and this inner class is not a static class so I can access both the non-static and static state of the outer class, right? So this works. I don't get any compilation error. We had this wheel which was a, which was a static inner class, right? And then uh, let's say, uh, can we access, first of all, I use this here and this, this again, even in a static class, this, this always refers to the closest scope of a class, which is this, this wheel class, right? Again, this, this, doesn't refer to the uh, outer class it refers to the closest uh, uh, class that it is inside so this this refers to this wheel class right now we can say uh, um, let's say price or this that price is uh, um, let's say uh, uh, a string dummy all right and then uh, um, and let's say this that dummy this dot dummy equals for example the model the question is does this work the answer is no because model is associated with a non-static state of the outer class and a static class cannot be dependent on the non-static state of the outer class that's why we're getting this compilation error and it says cannot make a static reference to the non-static field model why because this class is a static and we said that you can use the static modifier on the inner classes but you cannot use a static modifier on the global classes if a class is declared in the global scope of a source file you cannot use um, you cannot use a static modifier on it so compiler gives us a compilation error saying that cannot make a static reference to the non-static field now if we make this for example int dummy and say uh, dummy equals price this works fine because price e oh okay sorry um so right now this price is uh, um uh, obviously it has a conflict with this because they have the same name so if i try to use price then it use picks up this price so we have to qualify this so we have to qualify it so we say the name of the outer class dot price right 
so we qualified with the name of the class so that we said this is a static field and we can access a static field we can access a static uh, uh, fields of the outer class right of the outer class inside the static inner class inside the static nested inner class that works that works fine but we cannot uh, use a non-static field or even method same with method we cannot uh, uh, call a method for example a non-static method in a, a static uh, uh, inner class okay it can lead to more readable and maintainable code which means let's say you have this wheel which is a static class right we can put it in its own file or we can put it in a car class and then if somebody wants to create a wheel they have to access it via the car they say for example car.wheel this is my type which makes a lot of sense right because which means this is not the wheel of a bicycle for example this is the wheel of a car so it makes sense that to say that uh, if somebody wants to create it uh, uh, obviously access this wheel type um, they have to access it via the car so this is very explicit and very readable code that hey this wheel is not a bicycle's wheel this is a car wheel right so this is another reason why we might choose to put a class inside another class not only to access its static state or uh, we just make it more explicit that this class there is a tight relation between this static inner class and the outer class because again a bicycle and a car both of them can have wheel but those wheels might have different properties right so it makes sense for them to have be separate classes but then if we put them as a standalone class then we cannot really put them in the same package because two classes with the same name cannot exist in the same package right um, so uh, but two classes with the same name can exist in different packages but let's say if we have a package called vehicles and we have bicycle and car we cannot have two separate classes called wheel in that case we the best option is to put the wheel as a static in a class for the car and also another wheel as a static in a class for bicycle then if somebody wants to create a wheel class then they have to either say car dot wheel or bicycle dot wheel that's very explicit and makes it uh, very clear what's going on same here people can say car dot battery which means this is a car battery not a bicycle battery so sometimes this is a very good uh, plan to have this is a good way of implementing things nesting small classes within top level classes places the code closer to where it is used so not only we can access the state of the outer class either the static part or both static and non-static but then it sometimes it makes it very uh, easy to understand that this class really belongs to this there is a tight relation between them as uh, with instance methods and variables an inner class is associated with an instance of its enclosing class and has direct access to the objects methods and fields also because an inner class is associated with an instance it cannot de define any static members itself so um, basically what this saying is that uh, it cannot define any static member so this might translate into that a class an inner class which is not a static cannot have a static members is this true private int uh, uh, age is uh, 10 um, this works fine but now we can say private a static and this works fine too so a non-static inner class can have a static state a non-static nested inner class can have a static state no problem so this is no problem there is no compilation error so this sentence is not really um, uh, is not really that accurate but then the question is how do we access this uh, static uh, class uh, static field and again we know that how to access the type of a non-static so we can say for example sysout so we access the static state via the class the type itself right dot uh, but now the question is the question is uh, um, if we do this can we access that static state and the answer is uh, no it looks like the autocomplete doesn't allow us to uh, doesn't allow us to access uh, the, the static state so why is it that we can have a static state in a uh, basically 
in a non-aesthetic class but why is it that but let's also put one inside this uh, uh, oh that's uh, let's also put one inside this um, aesthetic uh, inner class so and by the way we should make it public so that we can access all package level access I think the reason I couldn't access is because I made it private so let's make it public let's say this is some sort of constant or something so uh, public a static uh, a string a type or model and let's call it just a plain plain old wheel right or a fancy wheel for example a sport a sport wheel right so um, again we can do a sys out and then uh, this battery is a non-static inner class but we it can have a static state and we can access it via the type but the type is not battery it's outer class dot inner class right and everything should work fine yes for the aesthetic inner class same story we access it via uh, via the type so wheel and then we say that model this also works fine so no problem there non aesthetic and aesthetic inner classes can have a static state so um, this is uh, not correct right objects that are instances of an inner class exist within an instance of the outer class consider the following class outer class inner class an instance of inner class can exist only within an instance of outer class that's why we had to use if in order to create an instance of the outer cl inner class in order to create an instance of the inner class we have to use the dot new operator on an instance of the outer class to instantiate an inner class you must first instantiate the outer class then create the inner class within the outer class object or reference so this is uh, with this syntax instead of using the new operator which we invoked on a type a standalone type we use the dot new operator of the inner class type on the variable which is a pointer to outer class right so we create an outer class it's fully initialized the state is fully initialized and now we can uh, use the dot new operator to create an inner class why because the state of this inner class can depend on the state of the outer class so dot new operator understands that uh, if there is a dependency of the inner class on the outer class now we are we have an outer class object which is fully uh, initialized so there is no problem there are two special kinds of inner classes local classes and anonymous classes and we will look at the anonymous classes and also method local inner classes right so right now we've seen that uh, this uh, battery and wheel right one of them is non-static the other one is static and both of are defined in the global scope of the class that's why they're just plain old inner class they don't have any other uh, terminology like method local class or as anonymous as no these classes they have a uh, name we explicitly say have a class definition and these classes have a name so these are not anonymous classes an anonymous class is a class that doesn't have a name but this obviously this class definition has a name and then this class also has a name so no problem these are not anonymous and these are not local these are in the global scope of the class itself all right a static nested classes as with class methods and variables a static nested class is associated with its outer class but only the static part of the outer class which means the class itself not any instance and like a static class methods a static nested class cannot refer directly to instance variables or methods defined in its enclosing class so it doesn't have a dependency on the non-static state of the outer class it can use them only through an object reference inner class and nested static class inner class and nested static class uh, example demonstrates uh, this note a static nested class interacts with the instance members of its outer class and other classes just like any other top level class so this wheel class is really like a freestanding class but we put it here so make it explicit that uh, this wheel is a car wheel not a bicycle wheel for example right but you can instantiate it directly like any other with the regular new operator you don't need to use any dot new operator or anything this wheel doesn't have any dependency it can have a dependency on the static state of the outer class but that's fine because a static state is uh, not dependent on the new operator or allocating memory for a particular object it's always there so you can for now you can assume that this is like a constant number that uh, initializes this dummy variable 
uh, that has been nested in another top level class for packaging convenience inner class and nested static class example also demonstrate this you instantiate the static nested class the same way as a top level but then you have to say that outer class dot inner class right so right now it's not using that which is not correct you have to say new you have to access the type in order to create a uh, use the new operator you have to access the type and the type for an uh, inner class is the package dot outer class dot inner class so that's the fully qualified name of a, a static inner class or a, a nested class the type itself the fully qualified name remember fully qualified name is what's in the bytecode inner class and nested ex class example the following example outer class along with the top level class demonstrates um, which class members of outer class and inner class and a nested static class and a top level class can access i mean we've already looked at the lots of examples so i'm not going to uh, go through this and uh, in the next uh, lecture we're going to talk about the shadowing so please stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one